As we tend to do every year, today we'll be keeping the tradition going by taking a look at captainless teams. While doing so, we're going to analyze each team's present situation, which players make the most sense, and then narrow things down to the best overall option. Therefore, this time we'll be moving in alphabetical order while addressing nine different NHL teams. And with that, here are my choices for the captainless teams of 2022. Since longtime captain Ryan Getzlav retired here recently, Anaheim for the first time since 2005 won't have Getzlav on the roster come this fall, meaning that the Ducks will have the opportunity to anoint someone new if they wish to. Looking at the team, especially if you consider last season, it was a huge period of growth and change. New talents in Trevor Zegras, Troy Terry, and Jamie Drysdale began to really take strides in the right direction. On the other end of the spectrum, older, more experienced members of the team, such as Hampus Lindholm, Josh Manson, and Ricard Raquel, were given opportunities elsewhere. Therefore, this is a roster that is in transition. Sean Gibson may want out, and it's just hard to tell what this team will look like by next season. But the trio of leaders that still remain are Cam Fowler, Adam Henrique, and Derek Grant, who have all worn an A at one point. Jacob Silverberg is also an established vet on the team, but had a shortened season due to blood clots and is currently on the men from hip surgery. While it's also likely that the Ducks could start the season captainless, the most suited for the job in my mind is Cam Fowler, a lifer in Anaheim Fowler has been suiting up for the Ducks for over a decade now. According to an article from The Athletic, the defenseman has become more vocal over the years in the locker room, which is definitely encouraging. Fowler is also signed up until 2026, so most likely he'll be around for a while moving forward. Even though it's not official yet, it's beginning to look like Patrice Bergeron might actually decide to retire after all. Still, there's a chance he won't, but to make things even more interesting, I decided to include the B in the mix. The Bruins are also at a phase of transition in many aspects as well. After the departure of Zdeno Chara, then came the farewell from Tuka Rask, and David Krejci's absence has been felt throughout. Therefore, if Bergeron does decide to call it quits, it's possible that Boston will decide to retool and work on integrating new talents. However, even though there's a lot that is and has been changing in Beantown, one constant that hasn't is the presence of Brad Marchand. Humorously, when Bergeron was given captaincy, Marchand decided to prank his longtime teammate by pretending he was getting the C instead. Even though that didn't happen, it's possible that that was a glimpse of things to come. Marchand, who's never known anything other than Bruins hockey since draft day, has been wearing the spoked B since 2006. In another athletic article, which I'll link below, the author believes believed that Marchand had set himself up to be the next candidate and even went on to say that it was inevitable. The forward demonstrated early in his career the determination to improve and eventually se secured a position on the Bruins roster after battling hard in Providence. Knowing how fiercely competitive he is, having Marchand as a leader would definitely motivate his teammates to be their best. Even though he has had his issues with letting his emotions get the better of him, Marchand to me still seems like the obvious choice. Whenever Alex Tuck joined the Sabres roster late last season, it was hard for me not to wonder, even then, if he was going to be the next captain. For one, you could tell as soon as Tuck joined the team that he actually wanted to be there. Considering the state of the Sabres and how the team has been for the past decade, it demonstrates a decent amount of loyalty to the franchise. And there's definitely a reason for that as well. Due to Tuck, being a Syracuse native, he grew up relatively close to the Buffalo area. In a recent article released by the NHLPA, it revealed that Tuck has been a die-hard Sabres fan since childhood. I wanted to prove to everyone that I was a legit Sabres fan, so I started rattling off the guys that played on the teams that made it Eastern Conference Finals in 2006 and 2007. I was around 10 when Buffalo made those runs, and I remember so much of it, Tuck says. Right now, at the present time, the forward is signed up until 2026, meaning that if he was given the C, there'd be no worrying about his next deal for a hot minutes. Having a captain that's passionate about the team would definitely rub off on others, and he also seems to have a good attitude and poise about him.
There's definitely some uncertainty surrounding Calgary at the present time, since two of their biggest stars, Matthew Kachuk and Johnny Gaudreau, are both pending free agents. It's hard to tell what this team is going to look like come October. Despite this though, the Flames have a decent amount of leaders in the lineup. Michael Backlund, Chris Tanev, Johnny Gaudreau, Milan Lucic, and Matthew Kachuk have all worn an A at one point in time. As for Lucic, even though he does have that Daryl Sutter connection, his contract expires after next season, and it's possible that he'll decide to retire. Johnny Gaudreau, despite being the best player on the team for a while now, he's, in my opinion, not the best suited for the job. Tanev could be a good choice, however, he hasn't been with the team as long as some of the others have been, so it could be a factor considering. That leaves Backlund and Kachuk. Backlund, who's been with the team for nearly 15 years now, has been an integral part of the core for a hot minutes. And lastly, there's Kachuk. After we witnessed his brother being promoted to captain in Ottawa, it was hard not to wonder if Kachuk would eventually follow suit. Even though there were some questions about the forward's maturity level previously, it seemed like last season Kachuk had put the tantrum throwing behind him, which was a good sign. The only issue now is his contract. Since there's still potential for Kachuk to settle on a bridge deal this offseason, in my opinion, it could thwart his chances of receiving the C. Brady, for example, was given the honor after committing long term with his respective team. If Kachuk signs a short deal, my ultimate choice would be Backlund in the end. Even though most teams on this list are going through various changes, the Habs have had to transition the most within the smallest amount of time. The first domino to fall was shortly after the Habs lost to Tampa Bay in the finals of last year, as longtime captain Shea Weber was made to step away from play due to injuries. And then they lost another anchor in the lineup around the same time in Carey Price, who managed to still play a few games late last season. Philip Deneau made his departure official in the offseason, and Tyler to Foley also left the team mid-season as well. Therefore, most watching I'm sure can agree that Montreal has underwent the most amount of change in recent times. During the uncertainty though, there's been underlying optimism. Driven by a wave of youth featuring names like Cole Caulfield and Nick Suzuki, the Habs do have some brighter spots on the roster. And to further solidify a new era, GM Kent Hughes has already announced that Montreal will have a new captain by next season. A few candidates to consider are Joel Emmonson, Nick Suzuki, and Brandon Gallagher. Emmonson, who's been with the team since 2020, has become a household name in Montreal. Alongside Jeff Petrie, the defenseman has been a steady force on the back end and plays a similar stay-at-home style of game as his predecessor, Shea Weber. If Hughes wanted to go with a transitional captain, Emmonson could be the guy for the job, as he's currently signed up until 2024. Nick Suzuki, to me, is an intriguing option. He's come in early and proven himself to be respectable and reliable. Even though points aren't always everything, Suzuki stepped up his game last season, and despite the team struggling around him, one attribute that is good for leadership, though, is the ability to lead by example. He also committed long-term, so he's demonstrated a desire to be in Montreal by signing a lengthy eight-year deal. While he is only 22, the forward has shown a maturity level beyond his years for sure. Lastly, that brings us to Brendan Gallagher. Last offseason, I really believed that Galley was a perfect candidate. Longtime Hab, a battler, just what seemed like captain material. However, last campaign, we witnessed a different side of Gallagher, calling out Tim Stutzel for diving, getting upset with officials, amongst other things. If this was any other team, I really don't think we'd be having this conversation, but considering that this is Montreal we're talking about, this behavior may have went against him. My choice is Nick Suzuki. After a rough season last campaign, the Kraken are going to be looking to turn a page officially this fall. Following the departure of the first captain in team history and Mark Giordano, the vacancy has been up for the taking. Even though they were eager to have a captain when they began their inaugural season, it's hard to tell if Ron Francis will decide to let things take shape and worry about the position later on. But for the fun of speculation, let's discuss. At the present time, the Kraken have Jordan Everly, Adam Larson, Jaden Swartz, and Yanni Gord all listed as assistant captains. Eberle has a lot of experience, 
Larson and Swartz are both signed up until 2025, and Gord has a fire about him that's infectious. All of the candidates seem like decent choices. Despite this though, while narrowing it down for me, I'd have to choose Yanni Gord, fan favorite and the emotional heartbeat of the team. Gord has proven himself to be captain material. Not only does he have the other attributes going for him, but he's also a two-time Stanley Cup champ and therefore has valuable experience under his belt. At 30 years of age, Gord is signed up until 2025 and by then, he'll be a pending UFA.